On the 21st of June 1919, Admiral Ludwig von Reuter ordered the scuttling of the German High Seas Naval Fleet in Scarpa Flow, a large natural harbour in the Orkney Islands in Scotland. The High Seas Fleet had been confined at Scarpa Flow under the terms of the armistice that ended fighting in the First World War. America had suggested that the fleet be interned in a neutral country, but, as neither Norway nor Sweden agreed, Britain volunteered instead. The majority of the 74 German ships were in Scarpa Flow by the 27th of November 1918, where they were guarded by the British battlecruiser force. The fleet was manned by a skeleton crew of less than 5,000 men that gradually reduced over the next few months as they were repatriated back to Germany. Negotiations over the fate of the ships took place at the Paris Peace Conference, where the various representatives struggled to agree on a resolution. While Britain wanted to destroy the ships in order to maintain their naval superiority, France and Italy each wanted to take a quarter each. Concerned that the entire fleet might be shared out between the victors as the spoils of war, Admiral von Reuter, the German officer in charge of the interned fleet, began planning to purposefully sink the ships. Shortly before 11.30am on the morning of the 21st of June, the order went out to scuttle the ships. By 5pm, 52 of them had sunk. The sailors escaped on lifeboats and were captured as British prisoners of war. Meanwhile, nine sailors were shot and killed, making them the last German casualties of the First World War. MS Dresden was a Köln-class light cruiser, one of only two ships of this class to be completed. The other was sister ship SMS Köln, which also lies on the seabed of Scapa Flow. SMS Dresden was built by Howaltzwerk in Kiel and launched on the 25th of April 1917. She was a replacement for the earlier SMS Dresden, which was scuttled at Robinson Crusoe Island off the coast of Chile after the Battle of the Falklands in 1915. Dresden and her sister ship SMS Köln were completed during World War I. A class of 10 ships had been planned, but eight were scrapped before completion. Köln and Dresden were slightly larger and faster redevelopments of the Königsberg class of light cruisers. Despite being the final class of light cruisers to be built during the war, they demonstrated the Germans' continued interest in building surface warships even after failing to achieve a breakout during the Battle of Jutland in 1916. Dresden did not see full service until August 1918 because priority in manning was being given to the submarine service at the time. Once she had been commissioned the ship joined the reconnaissance screen for the German High Seas Fleet, assigned to the two scouting group, alongside SMS Königsberg, Pillau, Granis, Nürburg and Karlsruhe. The cruisers were in service in time to join the major fleet operation to Norway in April 1918. The I scouting group and two scouting group, along with the torpedo boat flotilla, were to attack a heavily guarded British convoy to Norway. But the Germans failed to locate the convoy which had, in fact, sailed the day before the German fleet had left port. As a result Admiral Reinhard Scheer, commander-in-chief of the fleet, broke off the operation. In October 1918 SMS Dresden and the rest of the two scouting group were primed to lead a final attack on the British Navy. The plan was to attack merchant shipping in the Thames estuary, while the rest of the group were to bombard targets in Flanders in an attempt to draw out the British Grand Fleet. Admiral Reinhard Scheer intended to inflict as much damage as possible on the Royal Navy in order to secure a better bargaining position for Germany, whatever the cost to his fleet. On the morning of 29 October 1918 the order was given. However, sailors on several other warships mutinied and the unrest ultimately forced the operation to be cancelled. During the sailors' revolt SMS Dresden was ordered to steam to Eckernford in the Baltic Sea. Here she was to serve as a relay to the nearby city of Kiel, as major unrest had disrupted communications. The ship then went on to Swinemunde in the Baltic Sea. Reports were circulating that mutinous ships were en route to attack the cruisers stationed in Swinemunde and, consequently, SMS Dresden's crew partially scuttled the ship. 
The reports proved false and SMS Dresden had to be refloated and returned to seaworthy condition. This involved removing all the ammunition for all the guns and allowing them to air dry. Following Germany's surrender in 1918, SMS Dresden became one of the last two ships interned in Scapa Flow. Owing to turbine failure SMS Dresden was unable to steam to Scapa in November alongside the rest of the high seas fleet. Instead the cruiser arrived in Scapa Flow on 6 December 1918, leaking badly. MS Karlsruhe was a Königsberg-class light cruiser, laid down in May 1915. She was named Karlsruhe after her namesake sank in the Caribbean in 1914 following an internal explosion. SMS Karlsruhe and her three sister ships, SMS Emden, Königsberg and Nuremberg, were vast improvements on their predecessors. Coal was carried in longitudinal side bunkers, which added extra protection against attack to the internal areas of ship. Oil was stored in tanks within the double bottom of the ships. Karlsruhe was commissioned into the High Seas Fleet in November 1916. She served in the two scouting group alongside SMS Königsberg and Nuremberg. The ships patrolled the Heligoland Bight in the North Sea, protecting minesweepers against British light forces. Between September and October 1917 SMS Karlsruhe was involved in Operation Albion, planned to eliminate the Russian naval forces holding the Gulf of Riga in the Baltic Sea. During the operation SMS Karlsruhe was one of five cruisers of the two scouting group commanded by Contradmiral, Rear Admiral, von Reuter, who would later give the order to scuttle the German fleet in Scapa Flow. She led the transport of German troops during the operation, including a bicycle brigade. For the remainder of Operation Albion the cruiser acted as a scout and protector for the IV Battle Squadron as its battleships destroyed the Russian shore batteries. SMS Karlsruhe undertook a sortie to protect the light cruisers SMS Brems and Arkona in April 1918 when they laid offensive mines off the Norwegian coast in advance of an operation to intercept Allied convoys. This operation was called off when the battlecruiser Molke lost a propeller. She guarded the coast of Flanders in October 1918 as the Germans evacuated the U-boat and destroyer bases at Zeebrugge and Bruges. The ship was the only one of the class the Germans managed to scuttle in Scapa Flow as SMS Nuremberg and Emden were both beached by the British. The wreck was sold in 1962 and partially broken up underwater between 1963 and 1965. Kronprinz Wilhelm was initially Kronprinz, becoming Kronprinz Wilhelm in 1918 in honor of Crown Prince Wilhelm. The ship was a Koenig-class battlecruiser, one of four ships of this class. The others were Koenig, Grosser Kurfürst and Markgraf. Kronprinz was laid down in Kiel in 1911, launched in February 1914 and commissioned in August of that year. On 8 May 1915 she suffered a premature barrel explosion in one of its guns, but no significant damage was caused. In April 1916 the ship supported a German raid on Lowestoft and Great Yarmouth along the east coast of England. The battleship took part in the Battle of Jutland, the largest naval battle of World War I, fought on 31 May and 1 June 1916. Despite being part of the vanguard of the fleet, Kronprinz remained unscathed and suffered no loss of life. As part of three squadron, Kronprinz attended the recovery attempt for two German submarines, U-20.
SMS Colm was named after her predecessor, which sank near Heligoland in the southeast North Sea. She was built in Hamburg and was launched on 5 October 1916. Only SMS Colm and SMS Dresden of this class were completed during the war. A class of 10 ships had been planned, two being completed, five scrapped after launching, and three scrapped on the stocks. SMS Colm and SMS Dresden were the final class of light cruisers to be built during World War I and demonstrated Germany's continued interest in building surface warships, even after failing to achieve a breakout during the Battle of Jutland in 1916. For many years there has been confusion surrounding the spelling of Colm. Cologne is the German name for the town of Cologne, but this spelling has varied over many years. The correct spelling for the ship is, indeed, Cologne and this can be seen on the ship's bell, now on display at the Scapa Flow Visitor Center and Museum at Linus on Hoy. Due to a lack of material and personnel, Essemskin was not commissioned until 17 January 1918. Priority in Manning was being given to the submarine service at the time. The cruiser was eventually assigned to the two scouting group, which was made up of modern cruisers and comprised eight light cruisers at its largest. The two scouting group was positioned at the head of the line in all fleet advances and during attacks on the British coast. As a result the group suffered badly during the Battle of Jutland in 1916, before SMS Colm had been commissioned. But for SMS Colm there was little action except for mining and patrolling in the German Bight. At the war's end, she was in Wilhelmshaven. In the Kiel Sailor Mutiny of October 1918, her crew remained loyal, and put to sea to escape the unrest. On 21 November 1918 SMS Cologne arrived in the Firth of Forth for inspection and then continued north to for internment in Scapa Flow. She reached Scapa Flow with some difficulty due to a leaking condenser. Markgrif was built in Bremen, northwest Germany, one of four Koenig-class battleships to serve in the German Navy in World War I. She was commissioned near the beginning of the war in October 1914. All four Koenig-class battleships, Markgrif, Koenig, Grosser Kurfürst and Kronprinz, were involved in the majority of the high seas fleet action during the war. The Battle of Jutland, on 31 May and 1 June 1916, was to be the ship's first major action. She sustained five heavy caliber hits and 11 men were killed, with a further 12 wounded. 
the ship was sent to Ag Vulcan for repairs until 20 June 1916. Markgraf took part in the advance on the British town of Sunderland on 18 to 20 August, but this proved uneventful for the battleship. During October 1917 Markgraf took part in Operation Albion, planned to eliminate the Russian naval forces holding the Gulf of Riga in the Baltic Sea. On her way back to the North Sea she struck two mines, both on the starboard side. The ship took on 260 tons of water but managed to reach Wilhelmshaven on the German North Sea coast for repairs. In October 1918 Markgraf was sent to Kiel. On arrival armed guards boarded the vessel and 180 men, who had rioted through the night, were arrested. This act was pivotal in leading to the 1918-19 German Revolution. On 18 November 1918 Markgraf left Germany for the last time, to be interned in Scapa Flow. When she was scuttled the following year she came to rest in deeper water than many of the other ships and was saved from extensive salvaging. MS Brummer was a mine-laying vessel built by Ag Vulcan Shipyard in Stedden in 1915. At the outbreak of World War I there were only three mine layers in the German Navy and so SMS Brummer and her sister ship SMS Brems were built to reinforce this number. As mine layers SMS Brummer and SMS Brems were more lightly armored, and less heavily armed, than light cruisers. They could carry 400 mines, two to four times the number which the light cruisers could carry. SMS Brummer and SMS Brems resembled British cruisers of the Aurora class due to the curved shape of the bow and the collapsible main mast. The hull incorporated three decks, oil being stored in bunkers in the bottom of the ship and coal being stored in bunkers along the sides. In October 1917 the two ships intercepted a British convoy en route from Bergen, Norway to Lerwick, Shetland. 
They had been selected for this task due to their high speed, large radius of action and resemblance to British cruisers. In preparation for the raid, their crews painted the ships dark grey to further camouflage them as British vessels. The two vessels sank the Admiralty M-Class destroyer HMS Mary Rose and the R-Class destroyer HMS Strongbow along with nine neutral Scandinavian vessels in the convoy. In the words of the English poet, Sir Henry John Newbold, throughout the attack the Germans displayed a severity which is hard to distinguish from downright cruelty. They gave the neutral masters and crews no chance to lower their boats and get away, but poured their broadsides into them without warning, as though they had been armed enemies. In the case of the destroyers the enemy's conduct was even worse, to their everlasting discredit fire was opened and maintained upon the Strongbow survivors. The Germans said gunfire falling short meant victims in the water and the lifeboats were hit unintentionally. The attack killed 250 men. Four officers and 41 men were saved from HMS Strongbow. Only two officers and eight men survived the attack on HMS Mary Rose. Two trawlers in the convoy were undamaged and one of them rescued most of the survivors. The successful action meant plans were considered to increase boiler space on SMS Brummer and SMS Brems so they could become commerce raiders. However, the plans were never followed through. SMS Brummer arrived in Scapa Flow for internment in November 1918.
Vessel History A German Bayern class battleship. The Bayern was launched on 18 February 1915 and commissioned into the German Imperial Navy on 15 July 1916. The vessel was interned in Scapa Flow with the majority of the German High Seas Fleet in November 1918 and was scuttled on 21 June 1919. The remains were salvaged in September 1934, during which time the turrets broke free of the ship. These were towed to Rosite and were scrapped in 1935. More information about the salvage activities in Scapa Flow can be found in the history section. Multi-beam echo sounder surveys were completed over the salvage site of the SMS Bayern as part of the Scapa Map project. These surveys documented a pair of depressions from where the ship lay, debris, and the remains of four turrets which broke free of the ship during the salvage operation in 1934. Diver surveys the turrets sit on a mud bottom in 38 meters to 45 meters of water in an area of slight tide. The eastern turrets, known to be the remains of Caesar and Dora, are well preserved. They stand approximately 8.3 meters proud of the seabed. At depth the remains of various hand wheels, machinery, transformers, electrics and electrical wires can be seen. These include a training pinion, central ammunition hoist press, gun loading hoist press, gun loading tray, and main hydraulic exhaust tank amongst others. The ball bearing centering ring in situ and are very well preserved. Vignasca and de Toro, 2011, Van der Vat, 1986, Friedman, 2011, Gardiner, 1992, and Roberts, 2010. Close to inner of the two eastern turrets, Caesar, there is a section of mast. It is possible to enter the armored gun house near to the seabed and see the inside of some features of the turret that are subsurface externally. The breach of the gun and gun mount can be seen inside the armored gun house, and the firing mechanism has been removed as per the conditions of the internment. Van der Vat, 1986-143, similar features are visible on the outer of the two intact turrets. There is some miscellaneous debris between them. The western turrets, Anton and Bruno, have sustained more damage, the result of a failed first salvage attempt in 1934. The Bayern lost buoyancy and sank to the seabed at a slight angle crushing this set of turrets. The barbette of the outer of the two turrets, Anton, has been pushed over to the west and the remains now sit horizontal to the seabed. Various bits of machinery, electrics, wires and piping required to work the turrets are visible including the central hoist, cordite waiting trays, gun loading cage and top pulley of the gun loading cage lifting wire. The ball-bearing centering ring appears to have been damaged when the turret was crushed. To the east side of the turret there is a hatch where it is possible to see within the armored gun house. There is a heavy chain lying across the aft part of the barbettes, but this would not have been part of the original structure. Additional portions of heavy chain are found to north of the turret The inner of the two turrets, Bruno, to the west stands approximately 3 meters proud of the seabed. Most of the structures and machinery visible on the other turrets are not present on this part of the site, although the ball-bearing centering ring can still be seen. There is another hatch which has a ladder leading into the armored gun house. This is surrounded by several pieces of coal. There is a davit on the seabed to the south of this inner turret. Side scan data The side scan images show two pairs of circular contacts which are spaced 56 meters apart and aligned east to west. The two circular contacts to the west are more broken down than the two to the east which are intact. These contacts are interpreted as being four barbettes which form the lower part of a battleship gun turret. On the two western turrets the aft part of the armored gun house is visible. There is a debris field between the two sets.
laid down in 1911 and launched in 1913. Koenig was one of four Koenig-class battleships in the Imperial German Navy. The ship was commissioned in 1914 and in 1916 led the German line in the Battle of Jutland. But Koenig got off to a bad start, running aground in December 1914 in the Kaiser Wilhelm Canal, subsequently being rammed in the stern by sister ship Grosser Kurfürst. Koenig had to be sent for repairs. Koenig took part in the advance on Terschelling in the Netherlands on 29 March 1915. She formed part of the supporting force for the German raid on Lowestoft and Great Yarmouth in April 1916. During the Battle of Jutland, on 31 May and 1 June 1916, Koenig was the lead ship and involved in the heaviest of the fighting. At 7.32 p.m. on the first day she was hit and listed to port. Six minutes later shrapnel wounded Contraadmiral, Rear Admiral, Banky. In the early morning of 1 June the ship, part of three squadrons, made her way back to safe haven. Due to the amount of water the ship had taken on board she was drawing 10.5 meters, 2 meters more than usual. By the afternoon, Koenig was in port. She had suffered 10 heavy and 5 or 6 medium caliber hits. One officer and 44 men were killed, 27 were wounded. Koenig's last significant action was Operation Albion. The ship landed troops on the island of Oso on 12 October 1917 and attacked several shore batteries. Along with Kronprinz she engaged the Russian battleship Slava, achieving seven hits, which resulted in the crew of Slava scuttling their ship. In October 1918 officers of Koenig defended the ship during the mutiny at Kiel and, as a result, several were killed. Koenig and with the light cruiser Dresden were last two ships to arrive in Scapa Flow for internment, on 6 December 1918. Unlike the majority of the German high seas fleet scuttled in June 1919, neither ship was raised during salvage operations.